testing one two three ladies and gentlemen welcome to the show we should be baseball announcers yeah sanchez is batting 165 he needs to go back home to his mama Welcome to Table Talk, the show about beer, board games, and everything else. I am Rich. And I'm Alex. And this month, we're talking about baseball. <laughs> oh, it's a high fly ball. And oh, we caught it. Never mind. Rich, you're out. Oh, no. That, that's that's very much in par with my Oh, wait, career. wait, but he dropped it, and now he's <laughs> dribbling it. And Ryan Rich is... Yeah. He's running into the bullpen. He, he's he's, he's no running around the bases. He's, he's doing it again. We don't know why. He, he's, I don't think he understands how to play this. <laughs> you got to run to the right, sir, not to the left. You're, you're, you're running the wrong way. No, when you go home, you're not actually going home. It was very confusing for me as a child. <laughs> run home. Run home, Rich. Run home, Run home, Run Rich. Home, Rich. <laughs> Uh, oh my goodness we're already off this is this yeah. is great we're talking about baseball this has been long looked forward to by yes. i'm sure you definitely um this oh yeah. is, this is this is alex's cup of tea um for sure alex alex is a big baseball fan i uh i hang in there as much as i can but i'm going i'm definitely i'm donning the baseball cap it's good cap and uh i am i am ready i think i'm i think i've, I've i'm ready to talk about baseball finally i my third it took 31 years but i think i'm ready to talk about it i'm finally ready to get it get it off my chest and speaking good. of my chest i do have yeah detroit uh, baseball detroit baseball um it's the only shirt that was available in my area so <laughs> i'm i'm sorry if you're not a, a fan what do you it's got good. what's what's on your hat Oh, oh! I, this is the uh, Durham Bulls. Uh, this is the AAA affiliate minor league team of the Tampa Bay Rays. I am not necessarily a fan okay. of the Rays, uh, but this Durham Bulls is one of the local teams that's closest to where we live. Uh, and the Durham Bulls also um, are considered probably one of the more historically uh, popular and famous uh, minor league teams in the country. And um, okay. they also have a movie about them, actually. Uh, uh, really? Bull Durham, starring Kevin Costner. So that was set in Durham, North Carolina. So there you go. And I can tell you about my hat too. But let's let's actually get into the actual episode. So first of all, Alex, welcome yes. back. <laughs> Thank you, Rich. <laughs> welcome, welcome back to the show. How was how was um how's fatherhood? <laughs> fatherhood is great. Uh, yes, I'm really appreciative of Rob. Rob, shout out to you, sir. You did yes. great. Thank you yeah. for uh, uh, holding the fort, uh, as it were, especially for World War II. That was really fascinating to listen to. Um, yeah, and uh, I would have not been at all productive at all in the conversation because I was kind of a blank stare of of uh, of happy nothingness uh, for the first couple weeks of recovery. Um, Good. And heck, I didn't even have the kid and I was still out of it a little bit. Um, yeah. Uh, but Violet is doing well. She is now five weeks old and very cute. She coos on occasion. And um, she coos. Coos. She like a pigeon? A little bit. A little bit le- less of the bobbing of the head and the, like the general stare. Yeah. She doesn't do that. She doesn't stare you down like this or anything. <laughs> Um, but, um, but she's good. She knows what she wants. Uh, and, and she's good at expelling, um, what she's supposed to expel, which is great. Okay, good. And, good. um, Caroline's doing well, recovering and good. We are, we are good in the hood and, and, good we, in the and, hood. and we, we do enjoy, uh, uh, our time together, which is great. So good, good. Happy parents. I'm, we're happy for you. Thank you. Well, I'm happy to have you back on the show. And yes, thanks to Rob, my brother, for standing in for the World War II episode. Yeah, Rob. Um, it's not really something I... It's going to be such a more lighthearted episode <laughs> this um, this episode and this month. This whole month, the series is so much lighter. <laughs> I didn't realize it until we were shooting it and definitely until we, we I was editing it and getting it all up on, on YouTube and, and the podcast, but was kind of a heavy topic that we didn't really think about going in yeah and then once we were in there we realized wow we really kind of have to tread lightly with this so um appreciate it's a it was a different vibe usually than what we usually have we're we're usually joking a lot and we're usually you know 
we're always looking for the puns and we're always looking for, you know, just kind of the jokes and stuff. But uh, it really ended up, it hit us both. And I'm very glad we did it. Um, I think it was a different tone that, that we both handled very well. Um, but I'm happy to be talking about something that's a little bit, a little bit more, uh, uh, just just lighthearted and fun, and it, it's literally a game. <laughs> and I yep. decided to just kind of relax a little bit <laughs> and just talk about a sport. That's that's it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so before we start, um, just want to direct everybody to the YouTube channel. If you're listening on the podcast, be sure to check out the YouTube channel, Table Talk with Rich and Alex. Um, we're looking for s- those subscriptions, guys. We know we know people are watching them, but uh, if you can, just just do the like and subscribe. Do that whole bit for us. We appreciate that. It helps us out a lot. We want to keep making the show, and uh, we want to we want the show to, to to be a success, which you know we we are keep, keep pushing for. So like, subscribe, help us out on on that platform. And then if you're watching this, hi. Um, be sure to listen to the podcast version. You can get it on Apple Podcast, um, iHeartRadio, Spotify. I think we're up on Audible now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of different places to find us. If you just type in Table Talk with Rich and Alex in Google, you can probably find us that way. Um, but And thanks to Buzzsprout for hosting that podcast for us. And thanks to YouTube for hosting us, our channel there. Um, but go check us out on, on either of those options. Um, links in the description for the breweries that we're going to talk about. Um, mm-hmm. we're going to share our beer here in a second, but links in the description for the breweries, the board game information, which we'll introduce here in a second. Um, there's also going to be a nice little how to play, um, uh, YouTube that we're going to share with you in the description as well. Um, we're going to talk about a very interesting baseball game that I'm, I'm excited to talk about. Um, we're not going to show you how to play it hundred percent, but there is a, a nice little YouTube channel that I'm going to direct you to that taught me how to play it. And I'm going to pass that on to you guys. So um, before we get to that though, uh, I'm interested, I'm very excited because this is, this is your wheelhouse, Alex. So I'm interested to see what type of beer you got. Dude. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce you to the only brewing company in the United States, at least that I saw that is within a baseball stadium. Meet Bull Durham Beer. This is the Bull okay. Durham Beer Company. You want to talk about a great size for a baseball game? This is this is a nineteen point two ounces. So this is this is not your usual twelve that you'll you'll find. Like no. this is something that'll get you at least through the third, fourth inning, etc. That's a commitment. Um, <laughs> and uh, 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 this is, in fact, it's the only one I could find at the time because I don't think the stadium's open right now. Uh, this is the light uh, version. However, it, it, um, uh, I'll be very curious how this goes. But uh, yeah, I've been wanting to try this for a long time. And in uh, Durham, uh, the the Durham Bulls have this brewing inside their park, so it is the beer of choice uh, when you go to a baseball game. So yeah, that's 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 what they've been doing, and uh, I've been wanting to try mm-hmm. it for a long time. And and what better way to celebrate baseball than an actual baseball beer? So that's I like I it. I yeah. like it. I like the design too. Hold that. Isn't up. it nice? I want to. Yeah, it's a beer. It's a beer glass, but it looks like a bowl. I like mm-hmm. that. That's yeah. cool. What did you get? I found. Yeah, I found a nice little brewing company here in Grand Rapids um, mm. called the Mitten Brewing Company. Ooh. So that's that. Ah, Mitten, Mitten Brewing very Company. Good. Um, so I guess this is a question for you, Alex. Um, Mitten, is that a proper name for a baseball glove or a mitt? And it would be mitt. Okay. Okay, because I, I I had my this is this one thing that I I questioned about this was I know I understand it's Michigan it's called the Mitten State because it looks like a hand right 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 um I don't know if that's what they were trying to go for with that I I like it regardless right right I'm just saying it it I I the only thing I wanted to clarify with you is Mitten is not a proper term for a baseball glove correct correct if you said I brought yeah. my baseball mitten they might laugh at yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. But no, this is, uh, it's a great little place. So Grand Rapids, Michigan, the Mitten Brewing Company, it's a vintage baseball themed microbrewery that expertly pairs handcrafted beers with gourmet pizza. Ooh. So we pair beer with board games. They pair beer with pizza. Somebody else pairs pizza with board games. So it's, it's a vicious circle. Oh Um, man. I looked at, I haven't been there yet. Obviously hashtag COVID. We haven't really been able to get, (laughs) get out and about, but I did look at their website I, I saw some of their pizzas. Whenever we get, whenever we get a chance to go out and and check out the Mitten Brewery, 
company. Um, I want to try out these these pizzas, these pe- baseball themed pizzas. Uh, there's a veggie pizza called Field of Greens. Ooh, good. Yeah, good. and then there is a goat cheese pizza called Curse of the Goat. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Nice baseball nod there. Yep. <laughs> um. Yeah. It's a so the beer I'm drinking is called West Coast Swing. It's an amber ale. Um, okay. Amber. I like amber ales. I like. I like. I'm obviously like tasting beer more than I like looking at it. But amber ales are very nice and pretty. Nice little red color. So I like that. It was a gold medal medal winner at the 2018 Great American Beer Festival. It has subtle caramel and crisp amber malt notes, enveloped in a malty and smooth body. Hmm. There you go. So that's my beer. Okay. You want to pour? Yeah, so and and just so you guys know who are listening, so this is a light ale, and I did want to give a little description based on what you were on yours, okay. at least for yeah. mine. So it's brewed with German Huhl melon hops. This easy to drink brew will deliver the craft flavors you love with almost half the calories, coming in less than a hundred for a twelve ounce pour. <laughs> nice. All right. Oh, but you got that. how how much do you have there though? You have nineteen though. <laughs> I know that's that's the thing is is they 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 have it in very small script uh, calorie count based on twelve ounce serving so yeah I feel like um, that's so American <laughs> and um, Rob left his mark my brother left his mark on on the show because uh, he had a Purdue Pete glass that he was drinking out of Ooh. and his his gift to me was oh uh, that, look at that little Ball State chirp chirp um, beer glass so ready. Probably not a good idea to do this over my computer, but I trust myself. Gently, sir. Heck, this may last the whole conversation. Yeah, mine looks so puny compared to yours. All right. All right, there you go. Cheers. Welcome sir. back. Welcome back to the show, Alex. Here, let me tell you. So, did you know? So, this my hat is courtesy of of Alex here. A nice little, nice little gift from from a good friend. Um, I didn't know who it was. It's called <laughs> the Beer City Bung Hammers, mm-hmm. and um, Beer City obviously being the nickname given to Grand Rapids um, due to some type of reason that I'm not really sure why they won. They won some type of competition sometime some point in the history and then declared themselves the beer city capital beer of city. the world i like that yeah so um so yeah so i actually looked into this so be, the beer city bung hammers are just it's like a it's like their alter ego it's the white caps it's the oh oh oh, 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 so oh i single, see what you're saying it's the single a ball club that's that's here in grand rapids that feeds into the detroit tigers and i i was like oh okay so they're the same team but why are they called the Beer City Bunghammers like mm, one day mm-hmm. out of the year? And I looked into it, and it, this is pretty cool. So the the Whitecaps wanted to embrace the Grand Rapids thriving craft beer culture by changing their name to the Beer City Bunghammers on Salute to Beer City Night. So basically, um, one day in 2018, they just decided to change the team's name for the night, <laughs> change the logo, change the whole design to the Beer City Bunghammers. <laughs> And then that they is just awesome. go right back to being the white caps after that. Yeah, um, that's cool. But I, it, yeah, it's basically just to kind of celebrate the, the culture of the of the city. Um, and then you, you know, what is a bung hammer, you may ask? Uh, so it's basically <laughs> uh, a specialized tool for sealing and unsealing the bung in the side of a barrel when aging craft beer. So okay. to answer the question of what is a bung... Uh, a bung is a wooden stopper for the opening in a barrel. So the bung hammer is used to fit the bung into the bung hole of a barrel. <laughs> so you have the the bung, which is like this thing, right? Right. My, yeah. Right. It's like and the then cork. You have the bung hammer. Okay. Yeah, it's like a cork. So you have the bung and you have the bung hammer. That's what's going on here. Got it. Usually it's not swung by a glass of beer, but not usually. Um, yeah, that seems a little, uh, yeah, a little paradoxical. You know. Yeah. But. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a bung hammer is an important tool in the barrel aging of beer, and the use of the bung, bung hammer looks a lot like the swinging of a baseball bat, as we can see. So that's why they chose it. Isn't I like that, cool? that. Yeah, 
I like that. Man. So did you did you know all of that when you sent it to me? No, did I didn't. Just um, I I just <laughs> I I did look up because um, I think this is a, this is actually a really fun thing to do, especially with minor leagues. But we'll get into that later. I did I, I do tend to look up what are the closest minor league teams because you usually can find one. Um, yeah. And I saw I noticed that the 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 uh, the White Caps were the like I think they're in Grand Rapids um, or at least nearby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I thought, oh, it'd be fun to give him a homecoming present. And then originally I was just going to get you a white caps hat. And then I noticed that one and I thought, well, it's yeah. destiny. So we got to no, go I that. like this so much. I like this so much more. It, there's so much of there's such a cool story behind it. And I, I, I honestly I wouldn't have even known about it until until I got the hat. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> Happy homecoming. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. All right, I'm really excited about this about this game. Yeah. Um, when I say the title of the game, Baseball Highlights 2045, what what just comes to mind for you? Blade let's, Runner. Let's just start there. <laughs> it's what people are watching in Blade Runner universe. <laughs> that's actually Baseball probably not too, That's probably not too far off, to be honest. Any anything specific though that besides Blade Runner? <laughs> I don't know Han Zimmer, you know trombone score in the back. Blah, you know when when the when the when the ro- or when I don't know robots or whoever show up and and start swinging mm-hmm. the bat. Um, I would also assume that like steroids would have been legal by that point. So you know everyone's <laughs> just you know yeah ripped yeah. Um, got it. You're and, you're really not that far off. Am I not far off? Honest. Okay, well that's, no, that's you're really not. You know. yeah. You're really not. Um, what type of baseball game? like analog style have you played if any have you played any type of like not not analog no. i mean video games okay. sure i've played plenty right. of those but but never right. uh never an analog baseball game which was super curious when you yeah. mentioned about this game yeah so they're just the first thing that came to my mind was a little game that we had when i was a kid it was like um it was like a little miniature like like kind of like pinball type of thing that you had mm-hmm, and you could mm-hmm. like flick it right it kind of worked like pinball but like you could you could tilt it and pitch the ball to yourself with it like that and then you'd flick the bat and it would hit it and you i remember this yeah yeah you aimed for different things to get like a single or a double or a home run or something like that so that's the first thing that came to mind when i heard about uh like an analog type of baseball game which to be honest i wasn't very excited about (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but um, I did some research. I'm really happy with this. Um, this is one of the first games that, unfortunately, I haven't actually gotten my hands on. Um, so obviously, we're, we're not experts. We say that all the time. We're not experts. We don't pretend to be about either beer, board games, or really anything that we're talking about <laughs> in general. Um, but this is a game that, honestly, I haven't played yet. I want to play it so badly now that I understand it and that I've seen I've seen some vid- videos on it. Um, so if you have played it, let us know what you like yeah. about it. Let us know what Super you don't curious. like about it. We're very interested to hear your opinion <laughs> about that. This is kind of one of the first episodes where we really haven't, we don't have a lot of experience with the game we're actually talking about, but I, I want to get my hands on this as soon as possible. So, um, here, let's dive into it without any further ado. Yeah. What are, what are about those ado's anyway? There's too many ado's. Dude, dude so this was wild. All right. So this is, this is the cover shot um baseball highlights 2045 <laughs> all right so cool yeah so you weren't far off with the robots to be to be honest um because that's kind of that's kind of what we're looking at here so one to four players 45 minute playing time for ages nine and up the designer is mike fitzgerald artist is william bricker published by eagle griffin games in 2015 so let me set the stage for you alex Ooh. okay because okay. they the theme theme is important in the, in any game, but I like the I like the theme of this game so much. Um, I'm gonna I'm basically gonna read out basically what the whole story is. <laughs> Tell me, <laughs> I'm 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 it. hanging on the edge of my seat. Now. Okay, all right. So American baseball has fallen out of popularity, and other sports have taken over as America's official pastime. This is this is in the year like 2030. 2030 okay. Okay. So, um, so other sports have taken over as America's official pastime. That is until the year 2032, when the game was shortened to six innings, and pitchers were encouraged to have bionic arm implants to improve their pitching. Cyborgs, as they became came to be known, <laughs> became increasingly popular in the league, and interest in the sport be- began to climb yet again. 
So in 2041, robotic players were introduced, fully robotic players, so not even, not even somewhat human. Fully robotic players were introduced to compete against cyborg pitchers. Robots could only hit, however, and could not play in the outfield. So in 2045, human players are still in the game, and they're now known as naturals. They are the best fielders by far, but are less effective at hitting and pitching. Getting drafted into the league as a natural is, um, is much harder, but those who do are very popular and are compensated um, very well. Many naturals are known to name themselves after great players of the past. Fans love them, and their presence on the, on the team ensures good revenue. So that's the setting right there. All right. Let me ask you, before we dive into it now, Alex, um, sorry, you're on this screen now for me, so I'm looking over here, but you're still there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hello, um, hello, hello. So just so far, okay, as a baseball fan, how do you feel about this? Because uh, when's the movie coming out? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Seriously, like this, See, is, I, this is a really good idea. Yeah, I I like this a lot, but obviously I'm not I'm not like a traditional what you would consider a traditional baseball fan. I like the sport. I've just never really followed it very heavily. I would have thought I mean, I've done like I said, I've done research on this. Baseball fans love this game, but I would have thought the whole concept of robots playing baseball would have been off putting to to fans. Do you think that yeah. Well, you think that's a thing. It's a hypothetical because, you know, mm-hmm. baseball fans, we all have this un, this belief that our sport will be forever undying. Basically, it's the United States Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, baseball. <laughs> In that if order. if okay. one of those three goes away, the, the, you know, it, the next step is just the whole country will fall apart. So, yeah. like, in our mind, we're like, yeah, sure, maybe in decline, but it's going to come back. It's just, you know, yeah. football okay. football's in its twilight era and, and baseball will come back. So, I think okay. that there's a... A stubbornness, but a beautiful stubbornness uh, okay. that that robots would not take over uh, as as that. Plus, it's like yeah. I mean, do you really want to watch robot? You know, because you you like watching the human be able to do it. But I'll explain right. why. Right. Okay. I'm interested in that perspective. That's why I brought it up. So, um, but let's continue. That's the story. That's the setting. Okay. Dude, this is so cool. All right. So the goal of the game is to win the series. Um, so obviously there's you'll see the games on the right, the zero to four. So it's a seven game series. The first player to win four games, sorry, or mini games wins wins the game, the actual game. This is kind of the traditional two player setup that we got here. There's a lot of different rules about playing with three players and four players. Um, but the beauty of this is that you can kind of play like tournament style or you can play basically just like seasons and then have like a World Series like playoff. Uh, if you decide to play it a little bit longer than 45 minutes, but you can mm. you can like compete against each other and like sit down and actually play play a whole bunch of different series together with a, with a few different people. Um, the game operates like a highlight reel, so meaning it's not overly tactical or bogged down with outs, innings, or play by play simulation. So it doesn't play like a like a game would. Honestly, it plays it. You're you're kind of you're kind of going through kind of the big points in the game like you're hitting the yeah. highlight reel it's kind of why it's called the baseball highlights um it's a card game so the key mechan- mechanism is hand management um it's been been kind of called a deck building game but i don't think it's really that as much as it is hand management because you're you're kind of choosing what type of cards you're going to have in your hand um i like that hand management concept a little bit more you'll probably understand what i'm talking about <clears throat> once we get into it so each player picks a deck or a team. So you have different starting teams that come with with the the starter box, basically. I'm, I'm not really sure what those four teams are, um, but they're basically kind of the same cities that have baseball teams now, like Chicago and um, you know Boston and, and you know all these different all these different plays. And then they have you can see the flag or the, is that is that what do you call that a pennant at the top? Pennant. Yep. Yeah. So you'll see their pennant at the top. Um, so you basically, you have, each player starts with a team. Each deck represents a 15-card roster of active players. At the end of each mini game, players are bought or drafted from the buy row, which is represented in this picture on the left here. So this is the buy row. This is the players that you can draft into your into your team. Um, replacing one of the cards in your 15-card roster. So once you draft a card over here, it goes into the team. And then you can only have 15 cards total, so you got to send one of these players to the minor leagues. So you basically, you 
you'll, you're constantly switching out cards in your hand. You're drafting from the left these better players, and this basic deck that you start off with, you kind of take cards out of that and send them, take them out of the game or send them to the minor leagues, uh, as it's said. That's cool. Yep. Uh, the player who manages their team the best by drafting the better cards and utilizing their upgraded abilities in the mini games will win the game. Okay? So that's kind of the general setup there. So the way it works, out of the 15 cards that you have, okay, you draw six cards from your deck to play the first game. All right, so you only draw six cards. All right, um, six cards out of the 15. So you're not sure what you're going to get in that first game. Each card offers either a defensive or an offensive action. Um, better cards offer both. So defensive actions are settled first, then offensive actions are um, threatened in a way. So um, I'll go. I'll get more into that, but let's just just kind of explain what the card looks like here. So we got. We got Willie McGuire, Nolan Gooden, Kong Thirty Five. So I'm sure there's a lot of joke, like like references in here. Um, Alex, I'll leave it to you to kind of tell me what those references are. But I know some uh, of these players are named after actual players. Yeah. So Willie McGuire is Willie Mays and Mark McGuire. Willie Mays uh, played for the, the New York Giants, and then they became the San Francisco Giants uh, later on. Okay. And then Mark McGuire was the uh, home run king of of uh, uh 98 the 90s um, yeah uh or nine yeah 1998 uh nolan i'm assuming nolan gooden uh, is referring to nolan ryan yeah he used to play for the rangers uh texas and okay. a few other teams i think gooden i'm not sure and kong 35 no idea <laughs> <laughs> look at that thing though it's like it's like the thing from the the wild west movie with uh <laughs> <laughs> um, with, with, uh, with Will, Will Smith. Will Smith. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what it reminds me of. Um I love how anyway. like un unhumanoid it is. It's just like it's yeah. just is a it looks like a lawnmower with a bat. Yeah, it's not <laughs> yeah, it's not even trying to to blend in. <laughs> um okay, so I'll go over kind of the card anatomy here. So the top left is obviously the player's name, and I think it has the team that there's playing for or that they belong to, even though you're gonna draft them or trade for them in the game. Um, top right is how much the player costs uh, to draft them. All right. The top right green is how much the player makes for you. So if you play that card in a, in a mini game, it, it gives you a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. The plaque bar down here, I'll just use the middle one. This little plaque bar is the defensive action that it that it takes. All right. So this is the this is the defensive action this card gives you. And then underneath that, all the gray bars or the gray boxes are the offensive threats that they'll threat, um, they'll threaten to basically perform if they're not blocked by the other team. Okay. The bottom left is the speed. So you have fast players, you have average players, and you have slow players. And that's slow represented player. by these colored pawns up here. Okay. Pinch hitter lets you swap out another card for a different card if you decide to do that, which I'll explain later on. But if they're a pinch hitter, then it'll show you in the middle of the card at the bottom. Okay. All right. Moving on. So here's here's the pawn, the base running pawns. So white is the slow runner. So white it advances the number of bases equal to the hit. So if you hit a single, um, whites can only go one base at a time as a single. It's a single hit. Mm -hmm. Blue does the same thing. It's an average runner. It moves. Uh, if you hit a single, then it moves one space. If it moves a double, you can move two spaces, just like the white pawn. The only difference is that if a blue pawn is on second base or in scoring position and you hit a single, then the blue will score. If it's white, okay. it just moves to third base. If it's blue, it actually scores that run if it's a single. Red is the faster runner and, and it advances one more base than the hit. So if you hit a single, it can move two bases. If you hit a double, it moves three spaces. And if you hit a triple, it um, basically scores batter up. So the visiting team bats first, uh, per tradition, right? Uh, All so right. for instance, this visiting team already has the bases loaded. It's threatening three single hits. So just shown by the card here. So this player has played, played this card. There's no defensive action to, to block the other player, whatever they're doing over there, but it does give them three, three single hits. So they put three and it's a slow player as we can see by the card. So they take three white pawns and put them on home bit, home plate. 
So now the other player has to play a card that is defensive on their board, which is off screen up there. Okay. If the other player cannot defend against all three of these hits, then the visiting mm-hmm. team will score at least two runs. That'll okay. be that'll be a single getting this guy in and this guy in. Okay. Because average speed can in a scoring position on a single hit can score. This right. guy goes to second base. All right. This one of these guys goes to first base. <laughs> All right. Then on the next single, everybody rotates again. And then on another single, um, bases are going to be basically loaded again. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So it's three singles. So these all, all three of these are going to score. And then these three guys basically load up all the bases again. That's assuming the other player doesn't have a card that stops one of those runs from getting in. It seems as though once when you actually see it visually displayed in action, um, like it yeah. logically progresses. And the great thing is like if you understand baseball, which I would say you would at least understand the concept of you're going around the bases right. and you know, this score. Um, yeah. And the cool thing about it is that you're constantly playing offense and defense. So you're you're every card you play, um, obviously not this one, this one's strictly just offense. Um, but every almost every card you play is gonna have a defensive action to stop some something from happening that the other player is doing. Let's go back to the other Okay, this is better. Okay. So whoever goes first, the visitor goes first. He mm-hmm. plays this defensive move, which doesn't do anything because it's his first move. And then he gets a, a single, an average speed single. So he puts a blue player here. So now he has an offensive thing going on here. This player has to play something defensive to maybe get this blue player off of the board for this guy. Got it. And. And he does an offensive move, which gives him two pawns on here. So now this guy has to play something defensive and offensive. So you're constantly thinking in both terms, defense and offense at all offense. points in time. Yeah. That's cool. Yep. And then you basically play until all six cards are used. So it's only six cards that you get to play in one game. All six cards are used. Um, and then whoever has the most points obviously wins the game. And then you move your game token. And then all the cards that you played, all six of those cards that you've played, you count the the green um, the green number in all those cards, and that's how much money you have. So this is a zero, right? So this isn't this is probably a good card, but it doesn't give you any money, all right? This guy it looks like a pretty decent card, and it gives you money, so it gives you two money. So you count up all the money that you have in those six cards, and then you can buy one of these cards for the next game. So you can so this this player is, is cost five, this player costs six, this player costs ten, right? So mm-hmm. if you if you play cards that give you ten green points, then you can buy this guy the next time. Super cool. So there are oh wow, it's really pixelated. I apologize. So there's some expansions. Um the expansion that looks the coolest to me is the is the coach expansion. So obviously all the all the expansions provide new teams and new players. So you can collect all the teams, you can collect all the players. Um, you can definitely do that, but, but the one that looks the coolest to me was the coach expansion. So it, it helps, it kind of plays around with hand management rules and it kind of dives deeper into baseball strategy, kind of like those plays that you're talking about. So you can do like a double, they'll let you do like a double steal, a triple play. Um, it helps you out with like, there's, it, it puts in like a bullpen management aspect into the game, helps you out with scouting. So you like, maybe you get some scouting points so you can, you can buy a player that you otherwise wouldn't be able to afford. (laughs) <laughs> um, it's not only as the game by itself seems really interesting, but the, the expansions to it seem like they add on different elements. That's to really game. fun. Yeah. Do they have a snacks, uh, version? Oh my gosh, <laughs> this art. Look at this art. Yeah. Look at that arm. I like that arm. The cyborg yeah. arm. Yeah. I'd hate so to there's... be the catcher in this game. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Is the ca- It doesn't, the game is pretty clear that there's three different types of players. You have robots, you have cyborgs that are half robot, half person, and you have the naturals, which are the, the regular players, right? Um, and obviously, robots are going to be better at hitting, cyborgs are better at pitching, and naturals are better at fielding. They don't yet have a, a robot that can field very well, apparently. But they didn't say anything about the catcher. So I don't know. It looks like a natural to me, right? Yeah, it does. It also yeah. looks like Mr. Met is right above his head. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yep. Interesting. Yep, there you go. And look at this. They're, they're, they're selling out. 
baseball's back in business now. Baseball's okay. back. So here, here's the reason I like it. And obviously I like, I'm saying I like it having not played it, which I understand is a little bit controversial, but the reason I like it as a game, I'm a pretty good judge of board games at this point. Um, if I'm confident in anything I say <laughs> on this show, I'm fairly confident about board games that I like and board games that I don't, even if I haven't played them. So the reason I like it, number one, number one is that it has a great theme. So although it may be, I don't know if it's controversial or not as a baseball game, um, but I think it's a good, it's a good theme to play with. It's, it's futuristic. It's, um, I don't think dystopian is the right word, but it's, it's, it's definitely, it, it takes it to a level that is, that makes it so much more interesting, right. Than just straight yeah. baseball. Yeah. Um, and it, and it does a good wink to, you know, actual baseball teams and actual baseball players while kind of adding to the story of baseball, I think. So I think that's, I think it's fun. Um, yeah. It sticks to board game mechanics, the good board game mechanics. So you're not just you're not just flicking a, a thing, right? You're not just playing with like a pinball and flicking something. You're not just rolling dice. There there are random factors to this, but the idea of a card game really made sense to me when I when I came across this, right? Because baseball and cards go together like ham and cheese to me. It seems like they do, right? Yeah. So. So having it be a card game and having like the the baseball art on the card and everything it just seemed like a good a good decision to me. So the mechanic of the hand management and deck building seemed to go together really well. It's real it's really simple. Honestly, I didn't I, I'm I don't ever feel like I do a very good job of explaining it. <laughs> um and you know and it it's not that the whole point of the show isn't to let you make you proficient in this game right right away. It's just to kind of introduce the concept to you. But it is very simple, trust me. Once you kind of sit down to see how it's played, it's very simple. It's expandable. It's flexible. You can play it by yourself like a solitaire game, or you can play it with with up to three other friends. I think it's a I think I think it's definitely something worth checking out. Um and yeah, I think I think one of us should definitely get our hands on this next time we're together. We should be um we should we should see. We should play a series, see who wins. I will only do it if we then have robots. Uh, try to go hit balls after after that. We should try to make our own robot that can <laughs> dress him up as a baseball player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take him on our shows. See if we can get him in the minor leagues. That'll, yeah. that'll be good for starters. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look how fast that ball's going too. Goodness, I know. It's Mach one. So cool. You like it? Yeah, dude, I love it. And and I I'm I can just see Ryan Gosling as the as the Blade Runner assassin in the background watching it right before he goes and takes out some robots. <laughs> oh man. Baseball highlights twenty forty five. Go check it out. So that's that's the baseball game. That's the beer in the board game. Um we're gonna close out the episode by talking about the different discussion topics that we're gonna be going through this month. Um, yes. everything that we're going to be talking about this month and in the upcoming weeks before we do that though, I think it's, I think it's appropriate for us, um, kind of three quarters of the way through the episode to just take a seventh inning stretch. Yep. <clears throat> you want to? All right. And we should get the music for this too. So <laughs> yeah, you can, you can do it. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Stretch it, Rich. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I never go back. Watch the quad and it's root. Root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. Watch your ankle for it's one, two, three strikes to out of the old ball game. <sighs> Thanks. I needed that. You know. <laughs> you know, I've always, I always love that the fact that the seventh inning is one of those seventh inning stretch is a thing that everyone thinks is silly, and yet we all do it. And it is I don't think it's wonderful. silly. I don't think it's silly at all. I think it's fun. It is fun. It's like halftime, but it's it is. not. But it's not halftime, which is fantastic. It's in the seventh inning, which is yeah. great. Like, it's like three I'd quarters of the way. It's like <laughs> it's like baseball just said, like you know what, screw halftime. <laughs> like the first game, they're like, we're not going to have a halftime. No half I'm not going to have it. No breaks. And then they got like <laughs> three quarters of the way through the game. They're like, are you guys a little tired? <laughs> I'm a little tired. I a think little tired, man. I want to I I stretch. Tired of sitting. Yep. 
That's the way to do it. Oh, man. All right. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. We're going to let's go through the discussion topics really quick. Everything to look forward to here in the next few weeks. Next week, Alex and I are going to do a little uh, conversational pitch and catch. I've already I've already hinted at the fact that I do not know nearly enough about baseball. Um, I have some questions lined up for you, Alex. <laughs> um, some of them are I will I will admit are softballs. Um, so we'll probably start off with a little soft. Um, but then uh, I did find some some pretty interesting trivia questions for you as well. <laughs> so see if uh, I can withstand yeah. it. Yeah, spend, take the next few days and, and try and figure out if uh, you can read up read read every baseball book that you can here before next episode. <laughs> the episode after that, episode three, is going to be we're going to talk about our baseball favorites. Oh yeah, what what type of favorite things do you want to talk about, Alex? I'm up for favorite memories from baseball childhood. Baseball childhood. Um, baseball ba- childhood. Favorite. <laughs> Favorite childhood memories about baseball. Um, uh, mm-hmm. Your favorite player is something I was thinking about. Your favorite play, mm-hmm. like okay. just in general, uh, to either do it yourself or just experience to see. Uh, favorite stadium. Favorite okay. team. Favorite minor league, because that's that can be fun. Um, mm-hmm. Other other potentials. Favorite mascot, team name. Favorite position. Favorite okay. place to sit for a game. Okay. Favorite place on a baseball field, and I'll explain those okay. later. Favorite right. baseball snack, and and I'd thrown it out there. Some sort of stadium tally is always kind of fun. Tallying up where we where we've been, what we've done. Correct, correct. Okay. All right. So I like those that. I think I would be uh, uh, down to uh, down to talk about. Got my peanuts. There you go. Can't I, be a baseball I, I, show without peanuts. You know, why can't we find Cracker Jacks at grocery stores? That's what I want to know. Yeah. Yeah, we got the peanuts. We kept the peanuts. We decided to do away with the Cracker Jacks, so. Yes, peanuts, so. they were both here for a certain period of time, right? I and guess. then somehow, like, you had peanuts, you had Cracker Jacks, and all of a sudden, it was kind of like this. Like, poor, poor Cracker Jacks. They're, they're far behind. Peanuts became so much more popular. You did, but the, I will say, you never saw a Cracker Jack with a top hat and a cane and a monocle. That is... You know that is true. Maybe that's yeah. maybe that's where they went wrong. It's some little yeah. kid with a dog or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You ain't, you ain't selling out a. You're, you're not. You're not going to oversell. Uh, uh, you know, against that versus a peanut with a monocle. You're always going to go the peanut with a monocle. Well, maybe there's some. Maybe there's some like like hidden story about why the peanut became so obviously rich, and the cracker jack came down here. Maybe they had a separation. Maybe there was a falling out of some sort between maybe, the peanut and the cracker maybe. jack. It's all it's all peanuts, man. Considering, but you know, if that's the case, Mister Peanut is not shy about showing how <laughs> how much how much wealth he has. He's a little little pretentious, if you ask. Little, me. little, yeah, yeah. But he's still wearing a <laughs> monocle in this twenty twenty one, so there is that to be considered yeah. as well. Yeah, I mean, there's a certain part of me that's like respect, but then there's another part of me that's like. It's a monocle. I, I that's that's uh, uh you know I I can see you show up for a, a job interview. So where do you find yourself in uh, five years? <laughs> <laughs> I see myself the uh, the owner of the uh, the peanut company. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we dressed for the interview. <laughs> Right, right, and you, it, but you're like you're like really nicely dressed. You don't explain why, and then like, well, where do you see yourself in five years? Pardon me. You open the little bag, <laughs> pull up the top hat, and then uh, a little. Let me do that again because oh, yes. oh, they're always doing that in shows with the monocle. Mm-hmm. And then uh, and then you <laughs> then you go from there. See what happens. Yeah. Talk about yeah. dress for success. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. Yeah, dress for dress for the job you want. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. Last episode of. <laughs> Last episode of the month is not going to be about peanuts and cracker jacks, although it seems like it could have been. <laughs> could have been. Um, could have been. We're going to talk about we're going to talk about the the topic that that Alex and I always end up talking about, which is movies. Um, I always love I always love Alex's perspective on movies, so I, I want to talk about it at every every chance I get with him. Um, so we're going to talk about the best baseball movies. Um, I'm going to even throw in a few baseball movies that I think are pretty bad as well. So. Um, but I will say that I, there's a huge caveat for this whole month, right? 
Rich doesn't really know a lot about baseball. So let's just <laughs> let's just say it right at the top of the, like we, we, honestly this should just be the this should just be the let, let's just take let's film this, all right? And we'll just put this at the beginning of every episode. Rich doesn't really know what he's talking about at any point in time, okay? So, that goes double with baseball. Um I I'm, I'm probably going to make a few jokes. If anything is in bad taste, if anything seems seems like it's it's anti baseball it's really not i appreciate the sport i'm a fan generally of sports in general right i don't watch curling but i respect the game right i can i i get it i i understand the strategy it's not something i tune into every time it's on same with baseball right i like it although i do have a season pass this year i was just telling alex before the show i did get my first mlb season pass so i will be watching Every single major league baseball. <laughs> Congratulations, my man. I won't watch all of them, but I will. The I will of, follow. I will follow a few teams, probably. In the words of Obi Wan, it is your first step in a larger world. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes, it is. It, it honestly is, and, and that's why I did it. I wanted. I wanted to get a little deeper into baseball, just because this show got me kind of really interested in it. So I'm excited about that, but that's, that's the discussion topics moving forward. We're next week. We're going to be doing a conversational pitch and catch, kind of get me up to speed with some baseball information here, get some of my burning questions answered. And then after that, we're going to do the favorites episode. And then we're going to end the, end the month with the, the baseball movies and um, yeah, stories. I think we're even going to probably pitch a, a movie idea to each other. Aren't we? Are we doing that? Did I'm you do all that? up for pitching it to you. See oh. if it'll be a, a hit. Wait, wait for it. Got my glove. Where's Do you my bring glove? your glove? Uh, oh, here we go. All right, here we go. Everybody, you pitch. <laughs> oh, nice snap! Yeah, across the seven uh, state lines, or however many yeah, we know. are apart from each other. Yeah. All right, guys, that's the show. That's uh this month. Sorry, that's this week's episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks again to uh, the Mitten Brewing Company. Um, go check them out if you're ever in Grand Rapids. Check these guys out. Um, try out the the West Coast Swing, the Amber Ale. I'm I'm really enjoying it a lot, and I'll be drinking it next week as well. So, and uh, special thanks to the Bull Durham Beer Company. Uh, their Light Ale, mind you, is a perfect baseball beer. I I can definitely seeing it pairing well with a hot dog on mm-hmm. uh, on a on a warm summer's day in late June, and I can't wait for mm-hmm. that. Cheers to episode one. Cheers to baseball. Thanks. Glad you're back, Alex. It's good to have you back. Good and be back. Um, yeah, until next week. Be happy. Brew hoppy. And game, game on. on. Cheers. All nine innings of it. You know, it's a good thing our pastime didn't be called, <laughs> what's it called? Stool ball. <laughs> Everyone squatting their hit. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs>